Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. Last five videos I have explained in detail regarding the provision of how to compute the income from capital gain, long term capital gain, short term capital gain, indexed cost of acquisition. All these things I have explained in detail in the last five videos. Now, in this video, we are going to start the problems. Remember, problems are based on the theory. If you have skipped all theory videos and directly if you come to the problem, you cannot be able to understand. So have some patience. Particularly income tax subject is a little bit tough subject because so many provisions are there. So until and unless you put some extra effort, if you have the patience of watching and listening carefully, then only you can be able to get the command. So my suggestion, if you have not watched, First of all, go to the playlist of my channel. Select the subject income tax for the assessment year 21-22. Watch the theory videos on capital gain. Then you come to this video. Now, before starting the video, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems, which I have given in the link under my description. So always keep ready the problem. Without having problem, you cannot understand the solution and explanation. Take a screenshot of the first two problems, then I'll explain all the points. Come on, I'm starting the very first problem. Sri Sai Chand purchased gold ornaments for rupees 2 lakh 5000 in the financial year 2001 2002 during the previous year he sold the ornaments for rupees 10 lakh transfer expenses 45000 and the cost inflation index in the year of purchase was 100 and in the year of sale is 301 calculate income from capital gain first of all you have to see whether the uh, asset is a capital and long term capital asset or short term if the SSC hold the asset for more than three years, it is called long term. In our problem, the SSC purchased gold ornaments in 2001-2002 and is sold during the current previous year, 2021. So it's a long term capital asset. So many years he hold. So long term capital gain. We are going to compute the long term capital gain. So how the solution will be? Sri Sai Chan, computation of uh, income from capital gain for the current assessment year. Assessment year is 21-22. Right? So this is the format. Consideration received. This is the sale price. In the problem it is given, the ornaments are sold for rupees 10 lakh. This 10 lakh. From this, we deduct the selling expenses. In the problem it is given, selling expenses are... The selling expenses are 45,000. So deduct 45,000, 9,55,000 is the net consideration. From net consideration, deduct indexed cost of acquisition. For long term capital asset, we have to compute indexed cost of acquisition. How to find out indexed cost of acquisition? The formula is actual cost into index number of current previous year divided by index number of the year of purchase. So what is the actual cost given in the problem? 2,5,000 is the actual cost. And current year index is 301. Always remember whether it is given in the problem or not. Current previous year index is 301. Which previous year? 2020-21. Our current assessment year is 21-22. So immediately before this assessment is the previous year. So before this 21-22, what is the year? 2021. So for 2021, the index number is 301. And the year of purchase in our problem, the ornament were purchased in 2001-2002. The index number for 2001-2002 is 100 given in the problem. So 2,5,000 into 301 divided by 100, you'll get 6,17,050. This is called indexed cost of acquisition. Deduct 9,55,000 minus 6,17,050. 3,37,950. This is the long term capital gain. That's all. So simple. This is the end of 
first problem now second problem i am reading out mr y n charan sold his residential house for rupees 28 lakh 50000 on 10th august 2020 cost inflation index 301 our current day assessment previous year is 2021 for 2021 index number is 301 which is purchased on 5 11 for rupees 1 fair market value on 14 2001 is 8 lakh and the stamp duty value is 9 lakh so two more new points we are coming across the asset is purchased in 1988 that means before 14 2001 so in theory video i have explained you income tax act says if the asset is purchased before 14 2001 the ssc can choose higher of the following two actual cost or fair market value whichever is more so what is the actual cost of the residential house 1 lakh 2000 whereas what is the fair market value on 14 2001 lakh so 1 lakh 2000 or 8 lakh whichever is higher is the cost of acquisition so 8 lakh is the cost of acquisition and stamp duty value 9 lakh again income tax act says the fair market value should not exceed the stamp uh, stamp duty value yes it is not exceeding because stamp duty value is 9 lakh whereas fair market value is 8 lakh that means fmb is not exceeding the stamp duty if it is exceeding the stamp duty we would have taken stamp duty value example suppose if the fmb was given 10 lakh suppose imagine if the fmb was given 10 lakh whereas stamp duty value is 9 lakh in that case we would have taken 9 lakh only that means fmb should not exceed the stamp duty value so here fmb is only 8 lakh stamp duty value 9 lakh so already fmb is less than stamp duty so we'll take 8 lakh as the cost of acquisition and ignore the stamp duty value now if selling expenses are 53000 transfer expenses compute the income from capital gain and tax liability if income from other head is nil so we are required to compute the income from capital gain and tax liability also assuming that the income under other heads are nil no income under other heads now see carefully mr y and charan computation of income from capital gain for the assessment year 21 22 consideration received in the first line it is given the residential house was sold for 28 lakh 25000 so 28 lakh 50000 sorry 28 lakh 50000 is the consideration received from this deduct the selling expenses or transfer expenses deduct transfer expense 53000 so net consideration we got 27 lakh 97000 from this we deduct indexed cost of acquisition so indexed cost of acquisition to calculate 8 lakh what is this 8 lakh fmb the fair market value on 14 2001 so 8 lakh into current previous year index is 301 and the index number of the year of purchase if any asset is purchased before 14 2001 you should take 100 as the index number so we have taken 100 So eight lakh into three not one by hundred will get twenty four lakh eight thousand. This is the index cost of acquisition. So subtract twenty seven ninety seven minus twenty four zero eight, you will get three lakh eighty nine thousand. This three lakh eighty nine thousand is the long term capital gain. So first answer we have completed. It is asking you to compute the long term capital gain. Four. Secondly, it is asking you to compute the tax liability. Now see carefully. Computation of tax liability. Income from capital gain, long term capital gain. How much is the income from long long term capital gain? Three lakh eighty nine thousand. The basic exemption limit is two lakh fifty thousand for the current assessment year. For the current assessment year, the basic exemption for non senior citizen is two lakh fifty thousand. So direct two lakh fifty thousand. Basic exemption. So taxable LTC is one lakh thirty nine thousand. and long term capital gain is taxed at a flat rate of 20% all these provisions i have already explained in the previous videos so 20% of 139000 
is 27,800. This is the tax on LTCG. Now, from this, tax rebate under section 87A will be allowed. This I have explained in the beginning videos. In the starting videos, I have explained about the exemptions and taxation rules. In those taxation rules, I have explained if the total income of the SSC is below 5 lakh rupees, he will be allowed ex uh, rebate under section 87A. Here, total income is only 3 lakh 89,000. He don't have any other income. He is having only this income. It is below 5 lakh. So, tax rebate under section 87A is allowed. How much? Here I have given. Since the total income is below 5 lakh rupees, so the tax rebate under section 87A is allowed to the least of the following two amounts. Actual income tax. How much is the actual income tax? 27,800. 20% of 1 lakh 39,000, 27,800. Or fixed amount. The fixed amount is given by the Income Tax Act. And that is 12,500. That you have to remember. The tax rebate allowed, fixed amount of tax rebate is 12,500. So whichever is least, 12,500 is least. So tax rebate under section 87A is 12,500. Now deduct 12,500, we'll get 15,300. To this 15,300, we add health and education cess, mandatory cess, that is 4%. So 4% of 15,300 is 612. Add up 612, 15,912. This is the tax liability. Now, according to the provisions of IT Act, the tax liability should be rounded off to the nearest 10 rupees. The so last two digits, you see, last two digits are 12. 12 means it is below 15. If it is 15 or more, we would have taken 20. If the last two digits are 15 or more, we would have taken 20. If it is less than 15, ignore 2. So remove this 2, it will become 10. So 15,910 is the rounded off tax liability. That's all. So in the second problem, some number of new points we are coming across. So this is the computation of long term capital gain and this is the computation of tax liability. In working note, you have to explain the details. In examination, you must write the working notes. Don't restrict your calculations only of this part. You have to give the explanation. What is the explanation? The asset was purchased before 1-4-2001. So the SSC can choose higher of the following two as the cost of acquisition. So in theory, I have explained. Whenever an asset is purchased before 1st April 2001, SSC can choose higher of the following two as the cost of acquisition, actual cost or fair market value. In our problem, the actual cost of the asset is 1 lakh 2000 and the FMB is 8 lakh, whichever is higher, so 8 lakh is higher. So cost of acquisition will be taken as 8 lakh. Now apart from that, stamp duty value is also given. So whenever stamp duty value is given, we compare FMB with stamp duty value. That means the FMB should never exceed the stamp duty value. FMB should never exceed the stamp duty value. The stamp duty value given in the problem is 9 lakh rupees. But our FMB is given only 8 lakh. So we can take 8 lakh rupees as the cost of acquisition. The actual cost and FMB on 14 2001 are lower than the stamp duty value. Hence, we take the FMB on 14-2001, 8 lakh as the cost of acquisition. As the cost of acquisition. Then, indexed cost of acquisition. How to find out this indexed cost of acquisition? Actual cost or FMB on 14-2001. This should be multiplied by CII. Cost Inflation Index of the current previous year. Our current previous year is 2020-21. Remember. For 2020-21, the index number is 301. In some problem it will be given, some problem not given. So you have to remember, current previous year index number is 301. Divided by cost inflation index of the year of purchase. If any asset is purchased before 1-4-2001, the index number should be taken as 100. 
सो इंडेक्स नंबर इज हंड्रेड तो एट लैख इंटू थ्री नॉट वन बाई हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी फोर लैख एट थाउजेंड दिस इज वॉट आई है Since the asset is purchased before one four two thousand one, so the index number of the purchase year will be taken as hundred. That's all. These are the working notes you have to write in examination. So in this video, I have completed two problems on computation of income from capital gain. Inshallah, the next problem I'll continue in the next video.